In earlier videos, we looked at the effects of elastic hysteresis and we related that to the mounts used on rotating machines. So in the example of an electric generator, we looked at how rubber mounts can be used in order to dampen the effects of the oscillations caused by the rotating system. We've also looked at hysteresis in the context of magnetism and we talked about how certain materials retain magnetism and we're going to talk about that a little bit more now in relation to our generator. So in a generator we have a stator which remains static and we have a rotor which rotates and in a machine called an asynchronous generator the stator is actually an electromagnet so in effect what happens is the magnetism of the stator reverses polarity. Now that's going to be dependent on the frequency of the supply. So let's say for example we connect a generator to a 50 hertz supply. That means the north and south poles of that stator are going to oscillate or change 50 times every second. Now one example of where asynchronous generators are commonly used is in wind turbines. So the generator will have a rotor and it will have various stator poles And those stator poles are going to be electromagnets in effect. Now one of the reasons this is done is to ensure that the output from the generator remains at the frequency of the supply. So if we say our grid in the UK operates on 50 Hertz, then by using an asynchronous machine, we can ensure that the output from our generator is also at 50 Hertz. The important thing here is what impact magnetic hysteresis has on the poles of our AC asynchronous generator. Now when we spoke about magnetic hysteresis we talked about the fact that a lot of energy can be lost because each cycle we need to demagnetize the pole and then we need to remagnetize it in the opposite direction and that process is happening 50 times every second for each of these poles. So we know that we lose energy but where does that energy go? Well in effect what happens is the poles are going to heat up and eventually, once they become hot, they're going to dissipate energy as heat. The important thing to point out is that this isn't desirable. Ideally, we wouldn't have this effect. So what we need to use is materials that are permeable, i.e. they can be magnetised, but ideally they don't have high levels of retention of that magnetism. So it's a careful balancing act to find suitable materials. But the important thing here is what happens to that material over time? Well, we've studied the impacts of thermal shock. And whilst this generator's in operation, we're going to expect the poles of our generator to become hot. If that generator is then turned off for any length of time, then we're going to see that temperature reduce. So there is the potential long term for some deterioration or thermal degradation of the poles of our stator. Now it is important to point out that the likelihood of this occurring is relatively low because these generators are generally in operation. The times that they're out of operation is really just for maintenance and so on, but it could potentially have an impact on the long-term life cycle of the generator. The other factor here to consider is how the properties of the material are affected as a result of becoming hot. Is that going to, for example, affect the permeability of the material? Or is it going to affect how much magnetism that material holds onto? So all of these effects would need to be understood when designing the generator.